And there is the man to whom this meeting is absolutely vital. Four times European champion Martin Schenker, the Norwegian, in that astounding Ford Escort of his. And there, alongside Schenker, number 152, is Francois Bontor, the Belgian, in the Audi Quattro. And then Michael Nordstrom, the Scandinavian driver. That's a four-wheel drive, 2.3-litre VW, and competing the lineup, making the fourth there, is Ole Arneson, the Swedish driver, number 111. Those three black stripes are actually 111. So two Swedes, a Norwegian and a Belgian, and Ole Arneson, like Schenker, is an, a, a European champion in rallycross. So there are four four-wheel drive cars down there. And off they go. They have to maintain station until they pass the marker boards, which they've passed. And Schenker goes into the lead with 560 horsepower underneath his right foot. That's a four-wheel drive car. The shell looks like a Ford Escort, and the similarity ends there. It's got a Zach Speed engine into the right-hander at Paddock there, doing over 120 miles an hour. Now up to the chicane. The left, right, they go through that absolutely flat out. So even after losing a bit of speed out of the right-hander, they're doing about 110 miles an hour. And now Martin Schenker, who is going absolutely flat out because the deciders for a new flaming from the turbo as he eases off and goes up Perry Hill again. The positions for the finals are three finals, C, B and A, with six competitors in each. And the seeding is done by virtue of the qualifying time. So Schenker will be going flat out. He's third in the European Championship, and he is 16 points behind Matti Alamaki, the Finnish driver, who is leading. Superbly set up that car, Gartrek car with its Mike Indy design four-wheel drive system and the front left wheel coming off the ground as Shanker flings it round the left-hander up the hill into North Bend and he's doing about 60 miles an hour as he slides it round now accelerates away puts his left wheels on the grass momentarily now slings it sideways This is three laps completed, so he's into the last half lap because each of these races is over three and a half laps in the qualifying races. And it's going to be a very, very easy win for Shanker with obviously the fastest time of the day so far. Shanker crosses the line to win. Ole Arneson is going to be in second position. And the gap between Shanker and Arneson was 5.9 seconds with Michael Nordstrom in the four-wheel drive VW in third position and Montan, Francois Montan, bringing up the rear in his four-wheel drive Quattro. So Martin Schenker can be well pleased with that. The last two years, he's had engine problems with his car, which have obviously affected his European Championship chances, although he's the reigning champion. And the unofficial time was 2 minutes 34.7, which is very, very quick for living. The first round of qualifying heats continue with, on the left there, the mighty, and I use the word advisedly, 3.4-litre-engined Capri of Tony Proctor. Then, number 15, Rob Gibson, the British driver, in his 3.2-litre Porsche, 110 is the Swedish ex-British Grand Prix winner, Rallycross Grand Prix, Rolf Nilsson in the four-wheel drive Porsche. And finally, making up the line, is Seppo Nittimaki. And, and Nittimaki has won this event in the past. He comes from Finland. He's got a four-wheel drive Porsche with an enormous amount of power. Indeed, number 141, Nittimaki. He's probably driving the most powerful car here, 630 horsepower. 630 horsepower. Nitty Markey leads. Rolf Nilsson in second place, both in four-wheel drive Porsches. Very, very different power. Proctor is in third position, and Rob Gibson is in fourth place. That's unusual for Rob, because uh, 
Ross already won two races in the British Championship this year, and he's obviously got some sort of a problem. He's going very slowly indeed. The pace is at the front of lap one, with Nitty Markey leading. And tight up behind him, Rolf Nilsson. Rolf Nilsson has got a very special suspension set up on the front of his Porsche. He's hit a tyre marker there. There's uh, the danger of him being penalised for that, and Nilsson sweeps through. Nilsson takes the lead. Nitty Markey fights back. The clouds of dust plunge up, and Nilsson's back leading again. Now it's Nitty Markey as they come off the loose stuff, out of Chesson's Drift, onto the tarmac at Dover Slope. And Rolf Nilsson looks as though he's giving best temporarily anyway to Nitty Markey. And I think that now Nilsson, like Rob Gilson, right, right, like Gibson, is in trouble. Oh dear, the race has fallen apart. Nitty Markey's out on his own. Nilsson is slowing up. And Tony Proctor is catching Nilsson and he's going to take second position, but Proctor too is going slow, although he's passed. Nilsson now up into second position. So, really, it's Nitty Markey on his own, but he can't afford to ease up because I remind you that the people who go forward into the six-man C, B and A finals are decided on qualifying heat times, the fastest of which we have so far. Martin Schenker, 2 minutes 34.7, so... Nitty Markey is driving against the clock as opposed to the competition, but not going any the slower for that. And this is his last one. Thirty-nine years old. He runs a Ford and Porsche dealership at Erla in Finland. Nitty Markey was second in the European Championship and won this round of the championship last year. He completes the race on his own. Tony Proctor is going to be second, but unofficially, his time was 2 minutes 42.1, which is the second fastest of the day. And let's look back at Nitty Markey and Nilsson fighting for the lead. Nick and Nitty Markey drifts out a bit. No, Nilsson goes even wider as they go and practically goes off the course, but literally arrows his Porsche through on the inside as Nitty Markey at Chesson's Drift drifts out. It's well named, it's very, very slippery there. It's chalk and in the dry it's dusty, in the wet it's slippery. And Nitty Markey retook the lead there, but not for very long because Nilsson was through on the inside only for the power of Nitty Markey's 630 horsepower car to take over and he punched through back into the lead. So Martin Schenker is still the target time and there in pole position is the man who is leading the European Championship of 1985. It's Matti Alamaki. He comes from Finland like Seppo Nittimaki. Next to Alamaki is Jettel Bolnerset, that's number 105, and Bolnerset is driving one of the popular Audi Quattro cars. Now, the British champion, John Welch, in a mirror image of Martin Shanker's car, with the Mike Endine design transmission, a Zack Speed engine, 560 horsepower, that's John Welch, and Yuka Peltari there, number 143 in the Porsche 911 3.3 litre car. And uh, Peltari there has got uh, no problem as far as drive is concerned because he has got a four-wheel drive car. Now this should be dynamite. And it's Welch, they hold their stations and straight into the lead goes Alamaki, followed by Welch. They're into the right-hander at Chesson's Drift. Welch has gone a bit wide. He's down to third position, and Alamaki is absolutely streaking away, going for that fastest time to qualify for the A final. Meantime, John Welch is right up with Bolnesets Audi, and Welch should get the power down now, but they're both four-wheel drive cars. Bolnesets 
number 105 is still in that second position as they go round the right hand and he's got about 550 horsepower to Welch's 560 and this is where Welch at 120 miles an hour goes through and takes second position now in front of him with one lap completed he's got Matty Alamarki Matty Alamarki leading the championship Welch second in this race John Welch has had a big problem in British events this year because by virtue of having four-wheel drive, he's had a 5% penalty on his times, but that doesn't apply anymore. And now Welch is closing up on Alamarki. He's driving a much smoother, cleaner race, having taken bolner set. John Welch, number four, the man from Aldershot, the 1984 British champion and fastest ever at Lyft. He's been round here in two minutes, 37 seconds, and he's going for it, and he does it. John Welch, who was fastest ever at Lyft until Martin Schenker went out today to knock three seconds off Welch's time. Welch is now in the lead. And... Matty Alamarki sawing away at the rear of John Welch's unique, almost unique, because Martin Schenker's is much the same, Ford Escort in the lead now. Alamarki going for it. And with rubber smoke pouring off his tyres, off his rear tyres, the power split favours the rear of Matty Alamarki. Doesn't matter so much whether he wins, provided he's got a very, very quick time, but there's only five qualifying automatically for the A final, the top fastest times, top five, and then the winner of the B final will make up the sixth competitor in the A final, which is going to decide the overall winner. So, up to the line, it's going to be victory, and indeed it is victory for John Welch now. There are the winners. Welch opening the door, it gets very, very hot in there. He's not doing that for effect, he's doing it to get some cool air in the car because his, his 1.8 turbocharged engine, 1.8 litre turbocharged engine produces 560 horsepower and it gets very, very warm. In the, in the Gar Track Escort four-wheel drive, there is Rolf Nilsson, the Swede in the four-wheel drive Porsche, number 110, Barry Hathaway, in the 1600cc front-wheel drive Ford Fiesta and Matty Alamarki who's got a major problem like he has got third gear and can't get it. So this should favour John Welch and Rolf Nilsson but that car of uh, Alamarki's, number 140, has got some 760 horsepower going through to those four wheels and that Alamarki leads away. Now, is that third gear going to hamper him? John Welch now right up under the wing of Alamarki's 760 horsepower Porsche with Rolf Nilsson in the Porsche four-wheel drive car in third place. Hathaway, not surprisingly, in fourth place. He's got an enormous power disadvantage. Up Perry Hill. Alamarki leads and Welch is going through and taking the lead. But Alamarki gets the power down down into third gear, the slowest corner on the course. Now they build up to 120 miles an hour. Welch couldn't help nudging Alamarki there. They were both committed, but it's a hundred, over 120 miles an hour. And Welch tries again, but Alamarki's got the line. He takes the apex, absolutely flat in the top, through the left-right chicane, just a change of direction. This is the second lap in three and a half. And the fastest time we have so far is Martin Schenker's time, 2 minutes 34.7. And it looks to me as though Alamarki is on target to get very, very close indeed to it, maybe even beat it. And I'm surprised as the tyre smoke pours off Alamarki's right rear tyre and he gives John Welch a puff of exhaust smoke just to discourage him a bit as he goes down through the gearbox. Now, this is where Welch will go for it again. Alamarki flings it sideways, gets the back stepping out. Just imagine, this is like driving on ice at 100, over 100 miles an hour through the chicane, down to Chesson's Drift. They enter it at about 45 miles an hour, and they exit it at 100, and Alamarki's lost it, and Welch is going through, no, he's not. Alamarki powers away again. That was a masterly recovery by the Finnish driver, 28 years old, 
Matty Alamaki. He won in Finland, he won in France, second in Austria, second in Sweden, second in Belgium, third in Norway. He leads the championship by six points ahead of only Arneson, the Swedish driver in the Audi Quattro, who will be out later. The last full lap, they go into their last half lap now, and Welch is going to have the greatest difficulty in the world in getting up with Matty Alamaki, letting get, let alone getting past him unless Alamaki runs wide and Welch is going to try and take him round the outside, cut across to the inside, get it, get the power down. But look at the way that Porsche streaks away. So, Matty Alamaki, the championship leader, wins in the first round, 2 minutes 34.7. Francois Monton, the Belgian school teacher, number 152, in the four-wheel drive Audi Sport. And the insides of these cars, as you can see, have been completely stripped out with strengthening roll bars and cages inside them. And uh, that is typical of these rallycross cars. It's turbocharged, that one, and it's a lovely start there. But what a start from Schenker! Gee whiz! Now, this car has been taped. Mike Endine drove John Welch's car in the Brighton Speed Trials. It's just the same as Martin Schenker's. And he went from 0 to 160 in half a mile. And these cars have actually been proved to be, these two cars, Schenker and Welch's, faster over a given distance than a Formula One car from Stansdell. Anyway, Schenker leading now on the first lap going for yet another record to beat his 2 minutes 34.7. Then behind him, it's Nitty Markey. And of course, there is the Porsche of Nitty Markey. And those two are virtually in a race of their own. Because the man who is in third position, Asbjornsson, is dropping back all the time. And, and Schenker is a quite incredible driver, four times European champion, comes from Stavanger, he's third in the championship this year, and he thinks he's got something to prove, because in Belgium, where he won the race, there was a, the race was actually stopped a lap early, and Martin Schenker had actually got his helmet off, when a couple of other drivers, including Matty Alamaki, stormed past him. And Matty Alamaki finished first. Schenker protested. The protest was allowed, but now Alamaki has protested again, and it seems that his protest may be upheld. So Martin Schenker is really wanting to demonstrate that he is the top man, the fastest, by winning here at Lydon. And he's well on his way to doing it. Into his last lap and a half now. And when you consider that he's leading Seppo Nittimaki, who as Schenker comes up to North Bend by practically half the distance between Devil's Elbow and North Bend, and that Nitty Markey won this event last year, you'll realise just how superlatively good the Norwegian driver there, Martin Schenker, is. Just on the edge of going off all the time, but with magnificent control, never actually does so. 560 horsepower there. Martin Schenker wins, no doubt about that. Rear wheel drive Ford Capri, Dennis Atkinson in the Porsche, Francois Monton in the Audi Quattro, and Barry Hathaway in the front wheel, wheel drive Ford Fiesta. Barry, the brother of ex British rally cross champion Graham Hathaway. Now, how will the 180 horsepower Fiesta on the right cope with the 320 horsepower Porsche of Dennis Atkinson and the 460 horsepower V6 Ford powered Capri of Tony Proctor? We'll see. It's Atkinson into the lead. It's Proctor in second place. It's Barry Hathaway third, but immediately retaking that third position goes Francois Monton in the green topped four-wheel drive Audi Quattro, two-wheel drive Porsche leads, two-wheel drive Capri second, four-wheel drive Audi Quattro third and going up to second, is he? Francois Morton sitting behind the spoiler of Tony Proctor's Ford Capri, the white Capri with which Tony's had so many transmission problems this year, 
that 460 horsepower engine started off being too much for the gearbox and Morton is now up into second place. So Proctor fitted a stronger gearbox. Now it's proving to be too strong for the drive shafts and the rear axle. So Tony Proctor says the problem is moving back all the time. And now he is too, because he's in third position. Morton is in second place. And Barry Hathaway, as you look back down the course, is ahead of Tony Proctor. That's a cheeky move. Barry Hathaway in the little 180 horsepower Ford Fiesta has taken Tony Proctor and third position. Meantime, up at the front, there's a race on between Francois Morton, who is second there in the Audi Quattro, and Dennis Atkinson, number six, in the red Porsche. And Atkinson, who is going absolutely superbly here, is a man who's already had a win in the British Championship this year, and a fifth and a sixth. Comes from Milnthorpe. Francois Montal is closing. Watch the Audi Quattro with its four-wheel grip closing up on, and is he going to take Atkinson on the left-hander? I don't think so, because Atkinson had the inside advantage, but now Montal can sprint up on the outside on the hill, cut across at the front as he goes into the very tight hairpin at North Bend, and they close! Atkinson goes right up alongside Montal, but the Belgian completely unruffled, puts his foot down hard, goes up to about 110, and the really super-fast men are going down the opposite side of Harry Hill at some 120 miles an hour. Francois Montal there, number 152 from Mole in Belgium, with the special 20-valve head in his five-cylinder Audi Quattro engine takes the checkered flag, Dennis Atkinson is in second place, Barry Hathaway is third, Tony Proctor is fourth, a time of two minutes, 44.6. The fastest is still Martin Schenker, two minutes, 34.6. On the left, and looking through his windscreen, Michael Nordstrom, fourth in the European Championship in the 2.1-litre four-wheel drive VW Beetle. There, Seppo Nittimaki, 630 horsepower, four-wheel drive Porsche, fifth in the championship. Now, Ariel Marinson, the Norwegian driver that's been such a sensation here today, in his four-wheel drive Talbot Lotus, and finally, another four-wheel drive car making four on the grid, Pete Dam in the BMW. So it's a VW, a Porsche, a Talbot Lotus, and there, Pete Dam's BMW, the multiple Dutch champion, against Nitti Marki from Finland, and against Martinson from Norway, and against Michael Nordstrom, number 112, and they streak away, and into the lead goes the big Porsche of Seppo Nitti Marki, the man who won this European round this uh, British round of the European Championship last year. Nitti Marki and Nordstrom challenging for second place with Martinson, who's got the exactly the same type of four-wheel drive system on his car as Martin Schenker and John Welch have on theirs. Martinson second then, Nordstrom in third position, and in fourth place, surprisingly far down for him, Pete Dam. Martinson is the real surprise of this meeting, 37 years old, he's a, he runs a trucking business in Oslo, and he's an ex-supercar champion of Norway, twice a champion, that's the man who's following Seppo Nittimaki here, number 141, the leader. And this is Martinson's first appearance at Lidl, so he's covering himself in glory. Super carts, these 250cc carts, which do about 140 miles an hour, and so that's Pete Dam's race finished. Off the course he tours, but there's no touring at the front because it's Litty Markey, Martinson, and then Nordstrom, Porsche, Talbot Lotus, BW. BW with four-wheel drivers, 2.3 litres under 
the boot lid and with flames leaping out of the back of Nordstrom's car there as he backs off and the turbo flames come out of the pipe into the last lap and a half in this three and a half lap race the finals over four and a half laps and Martinson fighting very hard indeed but it, the, the time of number 141 the leader Seppo Nittimaki who is fifth in the championship as Pete Dam tours off and into the paddock the time of Nittimaki I don't think he's going to be all that quick in comparison with Martin Schenker's time although he's being forced very hard indeed by Martin and he's into Chesson's Drift for the last time he being Seppo Nittimaki there 39 years old from Kerala in Finland and it's a win for Nittimaki it's second for Martinson dropping back a bit in the yellow topped beetle is Nordstrom in third position 2 minutes 41.3 not quick enough if form is anything to go by this qualifying round should be sensational because on the left four times European champion fastest in both the rounds so far Norwegian champion Martin Schenke in the XR3 four-wheel drive turbocharged Ford Escort rubbing his hands in anticipation because alongside him in a virtually identical car is the 1984 British champion John Welch second fastest here today that car will go from naught to 100 miles an hour in five seconds think about it naught to 100 in five seconds now Matty Alamaki the championship leader in his tremendously powerful Porsche tremendously powerful means 760 horsepower but he's missing third gear and finally the man who won the European Championship in 1983 and his third this year Swedish driver Ole Arneson in his Audi Quattro two four-wheel drive XR3 Ford Escorts Matty Alamaki in the Porsche Ole Arneson in the Audi Quattro stand by for blast off and Martin Schenker blast off Matty Alamaki in his wheel tracks John Welch is fourth bad start for John Welch and Schenker has lost the lead Ole Arneson who is fairly well known for his what shall we call them forceful tactics took the lead momentarily but Schenker gets his foot down and Schenker's got the inside line it's Schenker leading it's Arneson second it's Alamaki third it's John Welch frantically trying to make up time in fourth position as they go up Perry Hill into the third gear right hander at North Bend now up into third to fourth to fifth gear to 120 miles an hour down to Paddock Bend and it's Schenker leading Arneson second Alamaki third, but right on his boot lid is John Welch. We've got two bunches of two as Arneson goes up on the outside of Schenker and Alamaki with a bit of the bodywork pulling off his car on the left and Welch goes tremendously wide, too wide, too wide, drops back. He overcooked it there. Schenker is now coolly in the lead and he will take a lot of passing. This is lap two. It's a three and a half lap race. Welch is slowing down. Welch going round the left-hander at the devil's elbow very slowly. Something appears to have broken. But it's the fastest two times out of the three qualifying rounds that enable competitors to qualify for the A, B or C final. And so Welch may well be there, and Arneson is there. Arneson is in the lead. He's taken the number one spot from Martin Schenker as they go into Chesson's Drift, and Alamaki isn't giving up. He is right behind the new second place man, Schenker, who is now first. Schenker leads off the loose stop, onto the Dover slope, the tarmac. And Arneson, the Swedish driver, against the Norwegian Schenker, is almost pushing the escort as they go round the left-hander at the devil's elbow. Now, they're up the hill at Alamaki, he's right with Arneson. Tires smoking, dust and rubber smoke pouring from his tires. Now the quick bit, 120 miles an hour, and look at Shanker go. 0 to 100 in five seconds, that car will do. At the Brighton Speed Trials, John Welch's car, which is identical to Shanker's, 
got up to 160 miles an hour from a standing start in half a lap. And Chanka, with turbo flames pouring out of the back of his car, leads across the Dover slope. The chequered flag is out, and this has surely got to be the quickest time yet. Chanka first, Arneson second, and Alamarki in third position. And surprisingly, it is a long, long way off the fastest because it's two minutes, 41.6. But Chanka is still by far the quickest. So, after the three qualifying rounds, Martin Chanka is still by far the fastest with that record-breaking two minutes, 34.6 seconds. Three seconds faster than John Welch in the similar four-wheel drive escort. Third, Ole Arneson. Fourth, Matty Alamaki. Fifth, a surprising and excellent Ariel Martinson, ahead of sixth-place man Seppo Nitimaki. But now we have to take into account penalty points, which are awarded for either hitting a marker around the course or jumping the start. And when that's been done, Martin Shanker leads from Ole Arneson, with John Welch down to third, Matty Alamaki fourth, and Seto Nitimaki in fifth position. And the finalists are decided in terms of their times, taking into account any penalties that may have been incurred for hitting markers or jumping the start. So Dennis Atkinson is in pole position. That's number six, Dennis Atkinson from Milnthorpe, where he runs a garage, in his Porsche 911, that most famous and most desirable of motor cars, and certainly people to aspire to. 320 horsepower. It is not a turbo, it is not four-wheel drive. Then, alongside Atkinson on the front row of the grid, is number 143 there, the Finnish driver from Erza, Jukka Peltari, in a four-wheel drive, 3.3-litre Porsche. That's the front row. Now, there, is, there are two men in the second row, and the first of them is the Norwegian driver, number 104, Ger Asbjørnsen. He comes from Vala. He works on missiles in the Norwegian Air Force and isn't uh, prepared to talk to me too much about them anyway. Five years' experience, all in rallycross, and that, in the second row, is the British driver, Mark Reddison, 22 years old, a farmer from Darlington, four years' experience, just finished first at Prot, and is in terrific form here this afternoon. The last two on the grid are Hermie de Witt in the escort in the background, number 115, and our own Barry Hathaway in the 1600cc front-wheel drive for Fiesta. One of these men will go forward into the B final. Was that a jump start? Well, Dennis Atkinson clears off, but uh, he may be penalised for that. It will affect him if he finishes in first place. It won't affect him if he doesn't in terms of making progress in this British round of the European Rallycross Championship. Because the winner of this will go up to the B final. And at the present moment, Dennis Atkinson leads. And I see a signal opposite me which says number six, ten seconds, and number six is Dennis Atkinson. So Dennis Atkinson has got to win this race by at least 10.0001 seconds in order to qualify for the B final. He's going for it, isn't he? Atkinson leads Peltari in the Porsche, the white Porsche in second place. Mark Renison in the Escort. He really is driving magnificently this afternoon. Rear wheel drive. Number 66, Mark Rinson, it's a 1600cc Ford Escort. And he is leading the fourth place man, As Bjornsson, in the powerful four-wheel drive white Porsche, getting it sideways as he comes out of the left-hander and then up to the top of the hill. There's As Bjornsson, number 104, in the fourth position. Oh, he's very wild, and he's going to lose his fourth position if he's not careful. and leads through the dust and Renison is up into second position Mark Renison 
is challenging and is up into second position. There he goes, and look at the battle behind him. Third, fourth, fifth and sixth, virtually together, but Renison driving an inspired race is now closing on Dennis Atkinson in the far more powerful Porsche, and, if he, and he's less than 10 seconds behind Dennis Atkinson, so he is leading this race on time, if not on the road, and the way he's going, he's going to catch Atkinson. He won't know about Atkinson's penalty, of course. And off at the top of Harry Hill goes Hermie de Vint in the very attractive-looking green and white escort. Atkinson still leads, but the time lead that Atkinson has got over Mark Renison as he goes out of Chester's Drift is only just over three seconds. So, in effect, Mark Renison is leading this race by seven seconds. Closing fast on Renison, though. Look, you see the white Porsche there, number 104, and that's Gerd Asbjornsson, the Norwegian Air Force man, up Perry Hill. And this is the third lap in this four and a half, fourth lap in this four and a half lap race. So, unless Asbjornsson can find a real burst of speed, Renison is going to win the race because the gap now between the leader on the track, Atkinson, and Renison, who is second on the track for leading on time, is three seconds, and Atkinson has been penalised ten seconds. There is Atkinson. He's coming off the loose and onto the tarmac at Dover Slope to finish first, but not to win the race. The winner is Mark Renison. Second, I'm sure, on time will be Gare Asbjornsson, I should think. Atkinson will be third ahead of Barry Hathaway in fourth position. Well, it's going to be a bitterly disappointed Dennis Atkinson from Milnthorpe when he knows about that 10-second penalty, although he may know in his heart of hearts, because I suspect when he let in the clutch, he realised that he let it in a fraction of a second too early, and that's cost him... That's cost him victory in the C final and a place in the B final, because there is the man who has won the C final in the background in the red escort. Number 66, Mark Renison. All the way from Darlington, and it looks as though Dennis Atkinson is getting the bad news right now. Sorry, Dennis, you were penalised 10 seconds for a jump start. So, oh, down comes, down comes the window to, not in anger, I'm sure, but to let some air in, because the insides of those cars are very, very hot. And meantime, Mark Rennes in the, in the background gets the good news that he wasn't second, as he thought, but the winner. And these are the starters, because Pete Dam is not coming out. So we have Martinson, we have Nilsson, we have Nordstrom, we have Montal, and we have Mark Renison. Rob Nilsson. By virtue of the fact that he's in the front line, he should maybe leave away a bit, and he's done so. Now, if Nilsson or whoever wins this B final, they will qualify for the A final, the final four and a half lap race, which will decide the first six overall at today's meeting. And at the present moment, on lap one, Nilsson leads, Nordstrom is second, Renison is in third place, and Francois Monton, four starters, is in fourth position. Renison, whatever happens, will be able to proudly say that he got into the B final of the British round of the European Running Cross series. Here at the... There goes Nordstrom, throwing up the dirt and closing up on Nilstrom. Now, we see Rolf Nilstrom on his second lap, leading with 750 horsepower in his four-wheel drive Porsche from Michael Nordstrom with considerably less than that in his 2.3-litre VW, which is obviously extremely nimble. And Nordstrom certainly knows how to use it, as he has been showing all season, fourth in the championship, 
behind Matty Alamaki, the leader, who we've yet to see. He's coming out in the A final. Ole Arneson in second place in the championship. He's coming out in the final. Martin Schenker, who has dominated today's proceedings, third in the championship. And then Michael Nordstrom, second in this race, behind that man, the leader, Rolf Nilstrom. Nordstrom in fourth place in the championship. And Rolf Nilsson, meaning to ensure himself a place in the A final, is now on his third lap. And the close gap which existed between the Porsche and the VW is now extended. And it looks to me as though, Michael, as though Mark Rennison, Mark Rennison is definitely catching Nordstrom in second place. Watch Mark Rennison from Darlington. There he is in the red escort, and he's on his third lap now. It's a four and a half lap race, and Nordstrom is out. Nordstrom is out. It's a three man race, but in the process, Rennison is going to finish certainly second. I can't see anything happening to Rolf Nilsson's car. It's been very reliable all season. Rennison's going to finish in second place, or is he? Because Francois Montau is closing on him now. Yeah, Quattro and Nilsson is stopping. Rennison could win this race and go into the final. Rolf Nilsson, I'd hardly said I, can, I can't see anything happening to his car, and it's happened. Nilsson is out, and now in the lead is Montau. Montau goes into the left-hander first, but Mark Rennison takes it back. This may only be a two-man race, but it's turning out to be a real cracker, with Mark Rennison, the Englishman, leading totally against expectations, cutting the apex at the right-hander at North Bend. That's a third gear, 45 mile an hour race uh, corner less than a lap to go when they go through the chicane they're on the last half lap and Mark Rennison could qualify for the final and that would be totally against expectations and sensational but look at Montau Rennison's got the inside line and he should just make it and Montau's right alongside him and he's going through he's got the four wheel drive and Montau's going to win Tragic luck for Mark Rennison, but he fought every inch of the way in a magnificent race, and he gets the applause of the crowd. He's really got the crowd here going. There's an enormous round of applause. Francois Montal waves from behind his windscreen, and the unfortunate bearded Rolf Nilsson, who was certainly on his way to victory, is out of the car, out of his helmet, out of the A final, he hasn't made it, and he didn't even finish in the B final. There's school teacher Francois Montal, 10th in the 1983 European Championship, Belgian champion in 1983 and 1984, like so many top drivers and ex kart competitor, highly popular. There's an enormous number of Belgian, Dutch, Swedish and other continental enthusiasts over but uh, with the greatest of respect to Francois Montal the man of that race for me was Mark Renison here he, he gr gr grittily drove through having got into the B final one must say against expectations he grittily drove through from the last qualifying place in the B final to the lead when Rolf Nilsson went out only to lose it in the very closing stages to Francois Montau. And here's how he lost it. Mark Rennison going into the last corner of the last lap, the 70 to 80 miles an hour at this point and getting faster all the time. Right-hander at Chesson's Drift, the back steps out, he just loses traction there, which enabled Francois Montan to line the quattro up and slingshot to victory. Now we can uh, relish the thought of this four and a half lap A final because what a lineup! Martin Schenker, the four times European champion from Norway, and it says escort there, but it's a very, very special escort. It has an 1800cc turbocharged Zach Speed engine 
which develops 560 horsepower, which will propel it from rest to 160 miles an hour in half a mile, and which will propel it from naught to 100 miles an hour in five seconds. There is Ole Arneson, a very forceful driver, who was won the British Grand Prix in 1983, Rally Cross, that is. He's in the Audi Quattro turbo four-wheel drive. John Welch, who is in a car virtually identical to that of Martin Shanker. And John Welch, number four, is the British champion of 1984. He's got the lap record at every British circuit except Brands Hatch. There's Martin Schenker who has what I would describe as a mercurial personality. Like he can fly off the handle at the drop of a hat. Just getting himself psyched up ready. Getting the glove palms nice and dry and plenty of grip on the steering wheel. He can, he can adjust the amount of drive that goes through to the front and rear wheels at will as he's driving along and the way that car gets away from the line is virtually unbelievable it's as though 760 horsepower four-wheel drive 106 points in comparison with Ole Arneson's 100 points 152 is the man we have just seen winning the B final crossbar motor and in the background Number 141 is the 630 four-wheel horsepower, four-wheel drive, 3.3-litre Porsche of Seppo Nittimaki, who won here last year. Get ready for the lights. Four and a half laps. Shanka, Escort, Arneson, Quattro, Alamaki, Porsche, Welch, Escort, Monto, Audi Quattro, Nittimaki, Porsche. A lot of horsepower. Arneson leads. Schenker takes him as they go into the right-hander at Chesson's Drift. Schenker takes him. Arneson is in second place. Alamarki is third. Welch is fourth. Nittimarki is fifth. And Montal is sixth. And as they go... And Welch has got smoke pouring out of the back of his escort. It may just be something on the pipe work and Welch has blown it John Welch has blown it he doesn't seem to realise it <laughs> so as they go down the hill well, John Welch is nothing deterred and he's pressing Alamaki in third position as they come to at the end of the first lap with Martin Schenker out on his own but only about four car lengths ahead of Ole Arneson's Quattro then Nitty Marky. There is the smokescreen laying escort sex speed powered car of John Welch, who's going to make it difficult for everybody behind him, that's for sure. But he's holding up magnificently. John, John Welch has had to take an engine back to Niedersissen, where the Zack Speed organisation is, and it looks as though he's going to have to take this one back at the end of the race, because it's going to be somewhat part worn. Good on John, he's, he, he's not worrying one little bit, but there's a couple of chaps with problems behind him because Nitty Markey can't see through the smoke and Mortal can't see past Nitty Markey. So it's a four-man race, and what a race on the third lap, and we think that John Welch is going to be black flagged. Not surprised, not surprisingly. But look at this battle for the lead with John Welch. He would have been uh, marvellous to have in a convoy in the war, actually. There's now smoke all over the course. You can't see, we can't see, but Martin Shanker can and Ole Arneson can, and Matty Alamaki can, first, second and third, on lap three, and it's still anybody's race, still anybody's race, and the red flags are going out. Oh, this is a disappointment and a great surprise. The red flags are out, and that, of course, means stop racing and proceed off the circuit with caution. Broken and it'll take too long to fix it. So it's a five-man final. Martin Schenker, by far the fastest yet. Ole Arneson, previous champion. Matty Alamaki, leading the championship. Seppo Nittimaki, who won last year, and François Monton from Belgium. Two Quattros, two Porsches, one Escort. But what a different Escort.
560 horsepower. Arneson got away quickest last time, but Schenk has done it this time. A lightning start from Martin Schenk, and Alamarki gets right up alongside Ole Arneson, and he's going to try and drive round the outside as they go into Chesson's Drift, through the dust, and Schenk sprints away as his four tyres bite the tarmac at the Dover slope, go into the left-hander at the Devil's Elbow, and that's a third gear corner, up into fourth, up into fifth, 100 miles an hour uphill, into the third gear right-hander north end, Arneson second, Alamarki third, Nittimarki in fourth position, Mortor dropping back in the green top, Quattro in fifth place, end of lap one, into the chicane, Shanker leads. Arneson second, Nittimarki, Alamarki in third position, Nittimarki in fourth, Alamarki nearly loses it, that gives Arneson the chance to break away, but not to close up on Martin Schenker, who is on his second lap in this four and a half lap race, and the gap now with Martin Schenker, who has had engine trouble in both the previous years here and failed to finish, is one and a half seconds ahead of Ole Arneson, there he is. 120 miles an hour down here and they're just going onto the loose. Flames coming out from the turbo on the overrun as the unburned fuel in the engine burns in the exhaust pipe. Shanka. 560 horsepower with this Mike Endine transmission system, four-wheel drive, which is much in demand by car manufacturers now. It's a real British first. And Martin Schenker helped develop it. The Zack Speed engine. And they're on their third lap now. One and a half laps to go at the end of this one. And Martin Schenker with Ole Arneson closing. Arneson in the Quattro. Number 111, second in the championship. Alamarki there is leading the championship and he is six points ahead of Arneson. There are 20 points for a win, 17 for second, 15 for third. He's going to be very close for the championship at the end of this race if they stay where they are now. There's not long to go in this race. They're on the fourth lap now in this four and a half lap race and up Harry Hill for the last time. Schenker leads, Arneson second. Ford Escort, Zack Speed powered, four-wheel drive, Martin Schenker's car leads, Ole Arneson's Audi Quattro second, then the Porsche, three different makes of car, Matty Alamarki, the European Championship leader, his car smoking a bit as he comes down the reverse side of Harry Hill. Schenker sprints through the chicane, flings the Escort into Chessens for the last time. This is Arneson's last chance to get Schenker. I don't think he's got a hope of doing it because the chequered flag is in sight and the Sphere Drake European Rallycross Championship round here at Lydon today has been won and deservedly so by Martin Schenker who won the first round with the fastest time ever at Lydon who won the second round with an even faster time, has won the final and is now getting ready to do his party trick. The door opens, the helmet is off, the balaclava is off. Look at me, Mum. No hands and practically no feet either. Martin Schenker pedalling the escort round with his left foot. He's made himself world famous for this. Tremendously popular, ever cheerful. Can, can, can get a bit angry with life at times, but his heart is very much in the right place and, and a magnificent engineer. And watch out Group C sports car racing next year because Martin Schenker is not only going to be driving Rallycross, but in the Group C World Championship as well. So, today's result here at Lyndon, the Sphere Drake Insurance International Rallycross round of the European Rallycross Championship of 1985. A win for Martin Schenker, with Ole Arneson in second place, with Matty Alabarki in third position. And if my mental arithmetic is right, that means to say that Arneson is now only three points behind Alabarki, 
back in the European Championship of 1985. And if you thought that Schenker was clever before, don't ask me how he's doing this, because I don't know. He's got to stop the car. He's actually coming up to the flags, flags of the nations now.